What's up guys and welcome back to another video. I hope you're well. I uh, hope you're feeling better than I am, a little bit sick. Uh, and this video is a follow on from yesterday's video. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But because I'm feeling a little bit sick, I wanna talk about everything that I'm doing to try and uh, speed up my healing process and get rid of this cold or flu as fast as possible. So I've got seven tips here. I've got some notes so I don't forget. Uh, I got my best seven tips here. The last two might surprise you, but uh, let's dive into it. So number one, sleep. Obviously, sleep is extremely important always for everything, but uh, especially when you're sick, uh, you want to give yourself, want to make sure you're getting enough sleep <coughs> to make sure you, you can recover and uh, get all the rest that you need. So last night I went to bed at 8 p.m. Uh, I was up at six this morning. I usually wake up around six anyway without an alarm. Uh, so I'm not setting an alarm. I'm just letting myself just get as much sleep as possible. Uh, and also the good thing about being asleep is, especially if you're in a bit of pain when you're sick, like for example, it hurts when I cough. Uh, if I'm asleep, I'm less likely to be coughing. I'm less likely to be in pain as well. So kind of just makes time uh, pass a little bit quicker and you're not aware of the pain that you're in so that's tip number one is get more sleep number two is rest now this is what my video was about yesterday I didn't go to the gym yesterday I haven't gone to the gym today either hopefully I can go tomorrow but I uh, will see so uh, I'm resting but I'm not doing anything okay you got to do s I, I, I believe anyway that it's better to do something rather than nothing uh, so I've just been doing beach walks okay so I went for a beach walk in the morning I'll probably go for a beach walk around sunset as well uh, and why that is good is uh, I'll get on to this in step number four actually but uh, I'm just doing a little bit of movement uh, during the during the day I, I might uh, swim in the pool as well so I'm just doing a little bit of light movement but nothing crazy um, I'm not over exerting myself uh, and with regards to work as well I'm still doing work but I'm just really not pushing myself I'm just taking it nice and easy I'm the sort of person that is like go 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 all the time you know I operate with like speed and urgency and I just want to get things done fast but right now uh, I've kind of just I've not got my foot on the gas you know I'm just cruising I'm just going about my day just getting done what needs to get done but I'm not really going above and beyond and really trying to uh, overexert myself so step number two is rest step number three is hydration now this one I believe people just massively get wrong because it's not as simple as you think the, the the advice that I see online is like oh just make sure you drink three liters of water a day is rubbish it's absolute rubbish because it's not just as simple as drinking water with regards to your hydration you've got to take into account your electrolytes your sodium your potassium and your magnesium so what i'm doing to hydrate is coconut water <coughs> excuse me i drank three liters of coconut water yesterday i'll probably have two two liters maybe even three liters today as well i'm just gonna see i'm just gonna drink to thirst but um the reason why i'm drinking coconut water is it's full of um potassium and I'm getting a lot of sodium from uh, the food. I salt a lot of my food, okay? So make sure, making sure I'm getting the sodium, potassium in. And I can just feel it's way more hydrating for my body than the normal water. So whenever I'm sick, I always swap out the water for the coconut water. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Uh, number four, nature. This is why I've been doing beach walks, okay? And this is why I'm recording this video outside. I try and spend as much time as possible in nature and outside, okay? You wanna, especially in the morning, you wanna be getting sunlight in your eyes. You wanna get sunlight on your skin, get barefoot connected to the earth if you can, like grounding has been scientifically proven to reduce inflammation. And if you can reduce inflammation and reduce the cortisol, uh, your body's healing processes will just work much more effectively. So, you know, that's why I'm, every morning I'm going to the beach, I'm walking in the sea, I'm grounding, I'm getting sunlight in my eyes and on my skin. Uh, and nature is just a critical component to uh, to recovery, to be honest, that, you know, we're designed to live in nature as human beings. We're not designed to live in these big concrete jungles surrounded by, you know, all these uh, air pollution and EMFs and everything like that. So uh, when I'm sick, I'm definitely spending more time in nature. 
Step number five, okay, food. This is a big one, okay? So with regards to food, I'm prioritizing nutrient-dense foods, okay? So I'm prioritizing foods like liver, oysters, uh, king prawns, eggs, bone marrow. I usually have bo uh, bone, bone broth with bone marrow every single day anyway, but I'm making sure I'm getting that in. Uh, eggs, I think I mentioned that. Uh, so yeah i'm prioritizing nutrient rich foods i want to make sure that uh, i'm getting all my nutrients in i want to make sure uh, that i'm not missing out on any key ingredients which is gonna potentially slow down my recovery also uh honey and honey and uh honey and lemon tea forgot about that then yeah i'm drinking that a few times a day uh, i don't know whether that's just like uh well hun lemons full of vitamin c and honey's anti antimicrobial. Uh, it's got honey's got a lot of benefits as long as it's raw and organic and stuff like that. So, I'm drinking honey and lemon tea a few times a day when I feel like it. Uh, and with regards to meal timings, okay. Now, usually what I like to do is push my first meal back to later on in the day. So I would just have some coffees in the morning, then I would have some bone broth, and then I would have my first meal later on. But uh, because I'm not feeling too good, I want to reduce stress on my body as much as possible and that also means I'm bringing my first meal back earlier in the day as well. So I'm spreading my, my meals out more evenly throughout the day. Uh, and also, um, this is an interesting fact actually, like I only ever seem to get sick when I'm in a calorie deficit. You know, if I'm in, a, in, in maintenance or in a surplus, rarely do I ever get sick, but the, the, the most like the times when I most often get sick is when I'm in a calorie deficit. In fact, the last few times I got sick, uh, I've always been in a calorie deficit. I got really sick last year with dengue fever. Uh, I spoke about that on the video yesterday, but um, I got really sick uh, then and I was just in the middle of a, uh, I was really lean. I was probably one of the leanest I've ever been and obviously got sick. And uh, that's the sort of one of the cons of um, sticking to a calorie deficit and trying to get lean and trying to get to single digit body fat uh, you are going to put more stress on your immune system and you, your body is going to be more susceptible to pathogens and potential illnesses that are floating around so you definitely don't want to push it too far um, <coughs> so I've been eating in a calorie deficit up until yesterday uh, now uh, I'm eating at maintenance I'm going to car carry on eating at maintenance until I start to feel close to 100% better. Okay, step number six. This one might surprise you, but it's avoid negativity, okay? Try and avoid negativity as much as possible. You know, whether it's uh, arguments with uh, your girlfriend or whether it's just arguments online or, you know, if there's any drama or anything like that, just try and stay out of it because the more you can get your body into kind of, or your mindset into like a, just a positive mindset uh, the faster you're gonna heal like our minds affect our bodies so much so much to the point that you, if you're in a negative state of mind it, it can affect your physical sensations so as much as possible you want to raise your vibration and you want to be in a positive mindset as much as possible and it will 100% help you heal faster so I'm avoiding negativity I'm trying to stay away from any drama I mean this is a good thing to do anytime not just when you're sick but particularly right now, uh, you know, I'm just trying to stay away from uh, negativity as much as possible. And tip number seven is avoid excess stimulation. Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about social media, number one, is because when you're sick, typically you have a lot more time on your hands. Maybe you're just, you know, in bed. Maybe you're just uh, on the sofa. Maybe you're not working. So you just got a lot more time and you can't really go out and do anything so typically what I see most people end up doing is just spending more time on social media more time scrolling more time just you know frying their dopamine receptors and uh, that stimulation is really not going to help you recover as well another thing related to this is blue light exposure so I went to bed at 8 uh, p.m. last night but as soon as it got dark, which was around, I don't know, seven, something like that, I'm not having any lights on. Uh, I'm trying not to use my phone as much as possible. When I do, I've got blue light blockers on. Uh, I'm just avoiding the blue light and that's gonna help me sleep much better at night and it's gonna uh, avoid overstimulating my body. Uh, 
same with coffee I still have had two coffees this morning I usually have two coffees every morning I'm not going to change that I'm just going to stick to a normal routine uh, so if you are drinking coffee I'd probably just carry on but just don't go excessive with it and sugar and processed foods like honestly I'm not really eating much sugar or processed foods anyway uh, but particularly right now I'm just making a uh, more of an effort to make sure my diet's on point, my sleep's on point, I'm getting enough rest and recovery uh, just so I can heal as fast as possible. So that's the seven steps and probably the most important thing to take away from all this is I've made the mistake when I was younger of just trying to push through, okay? It's just trying to grip my teeth, it's like, oh no, I'm not gonna stick, I'm just gonna carry on, okay? And depending on how sick you are, that's just not a good strategy at all because the only thing that happens is you just, you're not operating at 100%, maybe you're operating at 40 or 50% or maybe even less, okay? And this will just go on for weeks. And, and what you could have done instead is just taken a couple of days out, get yourself back up to 100%, um, and then you're ready to go again. So the net difference in loss of productivity, and loss of gains from the gym, and just overall quality of life uh, is much better if you just take some time out, let yourself get back to 100% and then just hit it hard again rather than trying to push through. Obviously, it is case by case the basis and it depends how ill you are. If it's just a bit of a runny nose and you're all good, then yeah, maybe you can just carry on. Just don't be a pussy, guys. Okay, so that's it. That's my seven steps from how to recover from a clue, a clue, from a cold or flu fast. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching and I'll talk to you in the next one.